Well, here we are. The jointer. It is an amazing tool that does a great job with squaring up on the stock. So that way you can do biscuit joining or gluing, putting stuff together. If it's not used properly, it is going to scare the living daylights out of you. That's just the way it is. The fact that behind this guard is a spinning cutter head going at a million miles an hour. Those knives, they're sharp right there. It can be a little bit intimidating on how to use this and how to use it safely. But we'll, we'll go through that. That's okay. We'll get there. Uh, with this machine, you got to wear safety glasses. The chances of something kicking back at you are pretty high. Uh, earplugs too. Those are a good idea. This is, is loud. You've got two, two or three knives on here spinning at a, at a pretty high speed. But they're cutting into a piece of wood, and, and that just makes a lot of noise. Uh, this is another good spot to not have any loose clothing or jewelry or, or anything, no gloves. Basically in the shop, just don't wear gloves. Before you come in to use the machine, what should you look at? Uh, I want you want to make sure that both of your, your in-feed and your out-feed tables are secure and that they're adjusted the way that you're looking for. Uh, really, this one is set up by, pretty much set up by me or another instructor. Not really going to be messed with and adjusted by the student or the average user. It's pretty much a set it and forget it. Once it's good, it's good. Uh, on the in-feed table side, there's actually a scale right here that reads off how much of a cut it's going to take at each pass. And you can adjust that by loosening up this lever handle. There's another handle down under here. You can move back and forth and adjust the height of the table. It actually does not adjust the cutter head. It adjusts the table. So to take off more cut at once, more depth of cut, you're actually going to be lowering the table, exposing more of the cutter head. Uh, to adjust for angle cutting, this is the fence on the back side here. This can be adjusted. You can loosen up with another lever handle in the back. And you can change the angle of it to get the angle that you're looking for. You know, it's 10 degrees, 45 degrees, 20 degrees. It's really whatever you're looking for. That's what works. And then you just need to make sure to bring it back up to 90 degrees here when you're done. So make sure that the next person who's going to use it has good results. Nothing can make you angrier and more frustrated with other people or with yourself if you forget is to put this back to 90 degrees. Then you go cut a bunch of material with the wrong angle. And that's, it happens sometimes. Uh, the squareness of your cut, by squareness I mean having your two faces of your material being 90 degrees, definitely related to how well this is set up and indicated in. It needs to be right on. So how do you use this? Well, material. So how do you use this? Well, you'll remember this piece of red oak that we were using over there for the miter saw. Uh, if I'm going to want to get this edge clear trued up, say I just brought it off the table saw and I can feel I got a little bit of high and low to it. I can see a little high and low right in here with the piece. Well, I'm going to use this machine to take off this edge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this side here, this side here, is nice and tight to the fence. And then I'm going to run it through and have it down on the table, tight to the fence, I'm going to run it through. Then you just kind of feed it through nice and smoothly and slowly. We're not in a hurry here. And I'm keeping my fingers well above the area where the cutter head is. As you get to the end, you just kind of let the trail right down. Really important thing with this is making sure that you've got this guard that it moves freely. If it sticks open as your hand comes by, all of a sudden you're really close to that spinning cutter head. And when that springs back over, it does a nice job of keeping you safe. It also protects the knives from having stuff fall on them, like hammer 
choice wrenches, tools, and uh, having it damage the cutting surface of those knives. Now you can do uh, multiple passes to get this thing so that it's nice and true and flat. The sound you're going to hear at first is going to be, you're going to hear it cut and then it's going to get quiet and it'll cut again and then it'll get quiet. And what that's indicating to you is that you've got a high and a low situation where it's cutting, it's taking the high spots away. And as you make multiple passes through, what you'll find is that it's going to become a much more even sound. It's going to be an even cut all the way across. And you'll be able to feel it too if you run your hand across. You're going to notice that there's much less deviation from a nice flat uh, plane on here. Uh, other things to be aware of when how do you cut safely is that you need to be the only one when you're using this thing you need to be the only one who's going to be turning it on or off we don't want everybody else to be over here helping if you've got some long stock then maybe you do need a helper over on the far side and he can help with you know catching the pieces that comes off of here but you want to make sure that only one person is driving you know, if you're both trying to control things, you're going to start to fight with each other, and that's just not going to work out. You need to have it so that one person's driving, it's the guy back here. Also, try not to talk to other people and get distracted, because this thing runs when it's on and all the other machines are running. You really can't hear that it's on. There's just a slight hum to it. So you might walk away and forget and get distracted talking to a buddy and all of a sudden it's running and somebody doesn't realize it and they come over here and they get hurt pretty bad. This thing doesn't just cut your fingers off, it pulverizes them. It's like putting them through a blender. Talk about feeding smoothly and slowly. The smoother and more consistent you are with your feeding of the material through here, the more smooth and consistent the cut's going to be and the better the results. Uh, if you have chattering stock, that's definitely going to be an indication that Either one, you're not holding it down tightly against the table and the fence and it's moving around, or more likely you've got dull knives. And if that's the case, you should stop and, and seek some assistance because dull knives on this really get to be dangerous. One, you end up having to push harder to get the cut to happen. And the other is that dull knives don't cut as well. They tend to grab and dig into the wood and then they throw it straight back. So one of the things to make sure is when you're standing here and feeding in your material, don't stand right behind it. Because then if it kicks back, it's going to kick right into you. What you want is you want to stand off to the side a little bit. There's, a, there's some grip tape on the floor here to give you a hint of where you should be standing. It's also right next to the on-off switch, which is a really good place to be. Uh, how deep should you try to cut on this at once? Well, if you're trying to cut a board now that's got a really bad high-low spot, you might want to go use the table saw and take out most of it and get most of a straight line. Or use the band saw and then finish with this. Uh, the way this is set up and how we use it in the shop, it's really set up to be a sixteenth of an inch or less of pass. Maximum, I would say, that you should ever try with this is about three sixteenths. Any more than that, and the chances of the cutter head grabbing the piece and causing a kickback or in this case, a throw, throwing away. Um, that really increases with that. Other things you can do to help avoid a kickback is if you've got knots or splits or cracks in here, try to avoid using those on the jointer. They're probably not pieces you really want to be using for your project anyway. They should be set aside or cut out and, and put in the scrap pile. Um, you get a knot with a chunk that comes out, all of a sudden that's a projectile and it throws it. The same with the cracks and the splits. It can just rip the board in pieces, and all of a sudden you're right there with a half put together board, and your hands close to the cutter head. And it's just not a good condition to be in. Another thing that you should be aware of is cutting with the grain. Okay. So, what is cutting with the grain and cutting against the grain? Well, all wood has a grain pattern to it, it's just the way the tree grows. And you'll see that on the ends of it by how the rings that are there. If you had the whole log from a tree, you could actually count the rings, starting on the outside and working to the middle. And 
and that is how many years old the tree is. It has a larger, wider summer uh, sapwood part of the ring, and then a darker winter uh, kind of sapwood to the ring. So really, you just go through and count the dark lines, or the white, the lighter bands, not both, one or the other, and that's how many years old the tree is. You can even see what years in this tree's life did it have really good growing conditions? When did it have bad growing conditions? If you start counting backwards from the outside in and you find a spot where there was a really wide growth band, you might find out that was a year that was extra warm and really a lot of rain. Uh, same could be true if it was a very narrow growth band. Maybe, maybe it was a year that was cold, didn't have much of a summer or it was a drought. The weather really affects the width of these bands. But anyway, what is cutting um, against the grain? What is cutting with the grain? Well, the way I've got these lines drawn on here is that it's, you're gonna be cutting against the grain, you're cutting into it. But, you know, as the wood kind, the grain kind of tends to go down on this piece, it comes down at an angle. And if you start trying to cut this way with the cutter, it's gonna to wanna to grab and kind of tear. It's not gonna cut as nicely. So if you try to feed this through, you're going to get more of a rough cut and it's going to be a lot louder. You'll hear a difference to it. And it's going to cause some trouble. To, and it can actually be a condition where it's really going to wreck things for you. Now if we go the other way, you'll see that the grain is kind of tending to go down this way. And when we cut into it, the cutter head is going to do a much nicer job of just slicing that away. And it's not going to bite in. It's kind of the same as over on the spindle sander where the side that you feed it into really matters on the performance and how the cut is going to go, or, or in that case, the sanding. So make sure, when at all possible, to feed, you know, uh, with the grain. It's going back this way. If you try to feed it in this way, just the way it tends to go up, it hints that it's going to want to grab it. Maybe it'll actually splinter it. It might hit to the back side and rip out a chunk and then your piece is ruined. Where this way, it just kind of gets to the end and nothing, nothing really happens, and that's fine. When it goes well, you never notice. When it goes wrong, everybody notices. Now, what can we cut on here? It's easy, wood, pieces of wood. Chances are you don't really want to try to cut plywood on here. You can, in some circumstances it works okay. But, for a general rule of thumb with a jointer, it's wood only, dimensional material, and it's just for the finishing final passes to get it set up nice and square and ready to be either uh, glued together or fastened some other way. You know, used correctly, this does a great job and makes your projects look amazing. It takes them to the next level for sure. Used incorrectly, and you spend a bunch of extra time and wasted some stock, the final product is not gonna reflect the time you've put in and the effort. So make sure you use this one correctly. It, it's really a powerful tool. It's a luxury to have it in the shop. We actually have two of them, this size and a slightly smaller one. So I'm hoping we get back in, into a, a shop real soon and that we're able to you know, really get a chance to use these hands-on instead of just me talking about them. Okay, so what are the parts of this that we need to know? Well, a big one at first is right over there is the start and stop button. I know on the picture we've got a little on off toggle push button deal. Actually, it's a push button, not a toggle. But here we've got the same general start and stop like everywhere else. Uh, moving up a little bit, we've got, got the in feed table. And we've got the lever for unlocking the infeed table. Right there is the readout telling you how deep the cut will be. Sneaking up a little bit, got the guard and the fence. Over here, we've got the outfeed table. And of course, down below, we've got the stand. See you on the next one.